dealing with the challenges with the kids is a lot about dealing with yourself ensuring that you're you're controlling yourself first before you respond to the children so you can manage that situation for the best possible outcome. The best part is that we own our own time. That allows us the freedom to create our schedule around the important moments in our child's life. Hello everyone, I am Crystal Bello Pitt. Hi, I'm Justin Pitt. And today we are going to give you a sneak peek of what happens in a day in our lives. Here, Here on, on Modern, Modern Parenting. Parenting. All right, guys, so what does a morning at the pit home look like? Well, let's say, for example, it's a holiday and we're getting ready to go out of town. But before that, we get up early. Justin's busy in the kitchen, probably cooking some avo toast with, what is that egg that you make? Poached eggs. Poached eggs. So we love poached eggs because especially when it's on the avo toast, the kids say it's a volcano and then they pop it open and the egg yolk explodes. So that's something we love. We really enjoy spending our time in the kitchen, start to go day music in the background, and just having fun with each other. One of the big focuses I have as a parent is making sure the kids eat well. I'm very mindful that they eat whole foods, nothing processed. So that takes a commitment in terms of preparing food for them. I think investing in your children's diet, particularly when they're young, so they learn about what to eat, what not to eat but then also it helps them develop both mentally and physically. Now, I actually don't eat breakfast because I drink my Yerba Mate drink, but that gives me energy, mental clarity, puts me in a good mood. The best part is it's burning my fat rather than burning sugar as for energy. Yeah, no, I, I love that product, but I'm, I'm a coffee guy. <laughs> so uh, I love my Italian espresso machine. I, you know, I make, I make a nice uh, latte in the morning, cafe style quality coffee at home. Yeah, so we basically love time with each other. We love time with the kids and just having moments like that, mostly in the kitchen and outdoors, is memorable for us. If you know us well, you know that we are deeply involved in our kids' life. The best part is that we own our own time because we own our own businesses. That allows us the freedom to create our schedule around the important moments in our child's life. When the children come back from school, giving them that sort of first five or 10 minutes, really reconnecting with them, whether it could be just sitting with them or you know, getting them to de-stress, what, what for a little kid can be a long day, particularly Hunter, he rides the bus. I could see it in my son's face particularly, he sits and he's a bit shell shocked and then he decompresses. And then 15 minutes, he's, he's back to normal. Like, right, what are we going to do now? In our house, we don't do phones. We don't do screen time unless it's a, like a structured movie night. So we fill all those other gaps with activities, the kids, not only to develop them mentally, but also develop them physically. Yeah, I control their schedule. So basically, we load them up with after-school activities. And basically, it's math and magis, It's come on reading. It's push bike, which I, me and some friends have made a business out of. My kids train push bike, go to push bike training twice a week. The best part about that is that it's my business. So when I show up for practice, I'm actually working and I'm being there for my kid, right? So two birds in, with one stone. But I'm also teaching the kids the value of creating value in a community. And I tell them the story, like I put this up because of you guys. I saw how you love doing this. And so I want to make that option available for other children as well. At least in their head, you know, business means solving problems, creating value. And I want them to be mindful of that because at the end of the day, impact first, profit follows. I think what I've learned is that dealing with the challenges with the kids is a lot about dealing with yourself. And I mean by that is controlling your own emotions, 
in situations where you might be challenged or it might be a difficulty or, or it might be a frustration and then modeling that behavior back to the children. And then they feel that. And, the, and even if it's, a, if it's an error or let's say someone made a mistake, ensuring that you're, you're controlling yourself first um, before you respond to the children so you can manage that situation for the best possible outcome for every, everyone. Because if you go into certain situations angry or frustrated, that certainly translates. I'm very conscious about the children's emotional state. So for example, Sienna comes home and she is she just wants to cozy up. We created a safe space for her. It's her own little tent and she puts whatever she wants in the tent. That is her space and she controls every part of it. There are times she comes home from school and she just wants to stay in her safe space. When I see that she's not ready and she just, like what Justin said, needs to decompress, I find that you know, giving priority to their mental and emotional state is much more important than any of the activities I plan. The motivation is, is, is a key part also. Kids thrive with boundaries and clear expectations, but they also appreciate different levels of motivation in different ways. Like something as simple as if I offer to take my son personally to basketball class, he's like, yes, I'm in. But if he might, you know, if we're busy and he might have to go with the driver or someone else, he might hesitate. So providing them that support, but also giving them that push so that, you know, they, they understand if they've committed to something, they, they, they have to do it. Getting them out the door and into the car to an activity is their only challenge. As soon as they're there, they absolutely love it. They're having a great time. They're with their friends. They're learning. They're developing. Now, involving them in creating the schedule is also important. So the night prior, you can talk to them. Tomorrow, Sienna, after school, you're going to come home and rest and you're going to go to ballet at 4 o'clock with your buddies. We have charts. Yes, we, so we have a daily routine chart as well. So they understand and know what's next and what to expect. Yeah, and then don't forget, make it fun. You don't want your activities to be a chore because they, they won't want to go, they won't want to do it. So make everything fun, make it lighthearted. Yeah, I think number one is we have family dinner virtually every night. Um, so we'd come together, the four of us, and we eat together. And we either take the kids, like we take the kids ourselves out to a restaurant because we think they also need to have that experience and learn um, a set of manners and a way to behave in a public environment. And then outside of that, we, we cook for them at home. So they get involved in the cooking, they get involved in setting up the table clear their plates, and then that time we spend together is also family bonding time. Every Friday, we actually have a movie night. So today's a Friday, right? Yeah. What are we watching tonight? Um, I think they're debating whether it's Toy Story 2 or uh, Incredibles 2. Sometimes we order in pizzas. It's a bit of an end of the work, end of the school week, work week. Uh, we spend time together. The kids look forward to it. It's a nice tradition to have, and it does give them a bit of screen time, but we're managing the content ourselves. After that, when we do our bath and our wind down, we talk about the movie and what did you learn and, and what did you like about the movie and what are some of the messages. So it's a nice opportunity to, um, to expose them to that as well. We also have our races. So like I said, we have the kick to pedal races and it's something that we, the kids look forward to. So when there's a race coming up, they show up at their trainings, they work hard, but not only that, during the trainings, they pack up the cones and I give them 20 pesos for that. So that is their, we call it the community gig. It helps them also understand the value of money and see, you know, like what does 20 pesos actually stand for, right? And they don't take that for granted. We are all about the routine and every night looks the same in different ways. So we eat, we have dinner around 6 p.m. and we talk about the day. Next, we do... Uh, what's straight up for bath time yes. after, after we eat. Yeah, so Whether it's bubble bath or shower. And I'm, I'm kind of the, the shower coach. We don't bathe them. I stand outside and I, I point to parts of the body. and. So, your right, kili kili. Wash your hair. Hey, your neck. Kili kili. And then, so they do the whole lot themselves. It takes a bit longer, <laughs> but I mean, they're four and six. They should be able to wash themselves. Um, and then that flows through. They dry themselves, dry their own hair, brush their own teeth, uh, put on their own pajamas. So it's it's very much a, I feel like a, a high school coach with a whistle, moving them through that process. 
it's important that they learn just basic steps. It's also why they get involved with cooking as well. They should be able to feed themselves. They should be able to wash themselves. With Hunter, actually, we've been spending a lot of the time. He's been reading with me, which has been great. So he taught him how to read and we'll continue on that journey with him. Um, and then Sienna loves books and we actually even have to limit the books. It's like, okay, three, two or three books this night because sometimes they just, if you tell them they can have 10 books, they will have 10 books. They love books so much. And we have this thing which we call the sandwich. So it's either I lie down in the bottom and then Hunter goes on top of me, then Sienna and then Dada. Or that is in the bottom. It depends. And someone sometimes they say, can I be the cheese? So it depends where the cheese is in the sandwich. So we do that. That's like our cuddle time right before they go to bed. I always end up at the bottom, but it's it's still a <laughs> fun, uh, fun tradition to have. Now, the kids have been sleep trained since, since they were six months old. So they actually sleep in their own room. They're supposed to be able to self-soothe themselves to sleep. Yeah, and they've done a great job. I mean, Hunter will sleep through a, a thunderstorm. Sienna at four has regressed a little bit, but she's getting back on track also. And so they usually sleep around 7.30 or 8 p.m. all the way till 7 a.m. the next morning. If they're school, they kind of have to get up around 6.15. Here we go. That's it. Thanks for joining us. This is Crystal. And Justin Pitt. For more videos like this, subscribe to the Modern Parenting YouTube channel. Bye. Bye.